Marcus Conti reporting. Welcome to an evidence-based channel. That's what it is. This is evidence-based. We look at the evidence. The evidence, the pile of evidence, and that's where we come to our conclusions. And the evidence is now in that election fraud, election fraud in the good state of Massachusetts has occurred. And what are we basing that? What are we basing it on? What is our evidence? The exit polls. Ah, the good people at TDMS Research have done some research, and they've crunched the numbers, and we have those numbers in front of us, and now we're going to look at the actual evidence that points to fraud, fraud, vote flipping, percentages off, what people actually said they voted for, and what the computer says, wildly off by as much as 8.2%. In some cases, 15% with Bloomberg. So check this out. Uh, this is real. This is our democracy on the line. This is, this is all the shit right here. You can work as hard as you want. You can, you can get out and, and knock on doors and pick up phones and tell people to vote for this one and that one, but it don't mean shit if your vote doesn't count, I, if you're being robbed. So here's the evidence that democracy is being robbed by the democratic establishment, is ripping off what they perceive as a threat the progressive wing of their own party. And here's the evidence. We're going to give it to you right now. The 2020 Massachusetts Democratic presidential primary was held on March 3rd, 2020. Election results from the computerized vote counts differed significantly from the results projected by the exit poll conducted by Edison Research and published by CNN at polls closing. As of 20. As in the 2016 Massachusetts primary between candidates Sanders and Clinton, disparities greatly exceeded the exit poll's margin of error. Sanders won Massachusetts in the exit poll and lost in the computer count. That was 2016 with Hillary Clinton. Has anything changed? Nope. The discrepancies between the exit poll and the vote count for Sanders and Biden totaled totaled 8.2%. That's double the 4.04% exit poll margin of error. i to repeat that. Sanders and Biden's total was 8.2% off. That's double, double the exit poll's margin of error. So the Massachusetts, uh, of course, the Massachusetts people and the, uh, the Board of Elections should be furious about this, that, that something is off and there's going to be a massive investigation to look into voter fraud and election fraud. I, election fraud, not voter fraud. Election fraud, where the, where the establishment is rigging the, rigging the shit against you. They're rigging it against you. There should be an investigation, right? <laughs> I haven't heard of anything. Have you? Have you heard of a single, a single feather ruffled? Have you heard any of the candidates say that, that they got ripped off? Are we the only ones who see the exit polls and know that it's off by 8%? In third world countries, that's, that's, a, that's a reason to disqualify the election, to invalidate the election because it's a, it's the, the numbers are so far off. These discrepancies replicate the total discrepancy of 8.0, 8% favoring Clinton in the 2016 Massachusetts Democratic primary between her and Sanders. So it's eerily the same as 2016. This, uh, this time, two progressive candidates exhibited the same discrepancies now favoring Biden, representing the establishment choice. Biden is Clinton with a penis. I told you that. Presidential candidates, Biden's, presidential candidates Biden's and Bloomberg's vote counts exhibited the largest discrepancies from their exit poll projections. Biden's unobservable computer-generated vote totals represented 15.7% increase of his projected exit poll share. 15% off! What?! Given the, given the um, 1,342,000 voters in this election, he gained approximately 60,900 more votes than projected by the exit poll. 
Bloomberg increased his vote share. I'm going to crunch the numbers. Just stay with me. I know it's confusing, but it'll make sense when we look at this amazing chart right here that tells the whole, it tells all the numbers. It gives us all the numbers. We're going to know in a second, right? You're going to see it visually. Inescapable. Bloomberg increased his vote by 28.2%, approximately 34,500 more votes than projected. Than projected. Oh my God. Their gain came largely, this is the power of money. You say, what did the, the billionaire buy? The billionaire bought Massachusetts and, and rocked the election. At least that's the one we know of. What about down in the South? What about, uh, what about everywhere? What about uh, Maine? What about uh, Minnesota? What about it? We're going to find out. We're gonna, I think these uh, same companies are going to do Texas as well. We're waiting on that. Their gain, their gain came largely at the expense of candidates Sanders and Warren, whose combined vote counts were 97,000 less than projected by the exit poll. This is fucking staggering. I mean, this is staggering inescapable evidence of cheating. Noteworthy is the fact that the 2016 Massachusetts Republican Party exit poll, taken at the same time at the same precincts as the Democratic primary, and also with a crowded field of five candidates, was matched almost perfectly by the computer count, varying by less than 1% for each candidate. That's the way it's supposed to come out. One, two percent off. Some people are a little shy, but never eight percent. Never, never fifteen percent. I mean, this is just eight percent. Ridiculous numbers. Exit polls are widely recognized, uh, such as by, for example, the United States Agency of International Development, as a means for checking the validity of vote counts. The U.S. has financed exit polls in other countries to, quote, ensure free and fair elections. (laughs) Uh, It's an oxymoron, uh, free and fair elections. Yeah, right. The United States, Bloomberg paid $300 a vote. That's That's not free. The United States remains one of the few major democracies in the world that continue to allow computerized voting count vote counting not observed by the public to determine the results of its elections. Countries such as Germany, Norway, Netherlands, uh, France, Canada, UK, Ireland, Sweden, not Sweden, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Denmark, Sweden, yes, Finland, and many other countries project the integrity of their elections with publicly observable hand counting of paper ballots. Not here, Joe. Not here, Jack. So here's, here's the chart. Here it is, right? You ready? So Massachusetts, right? Over here uh, to, the fo- to, to your left is the candidates. Right? <clears throat> and here's the exit poll. And then next to it is the reported vote count. So Joe Biden, Joe Biden got 28.9% in the exit poll. In the reported vote, they gave him 30 Four percent, 33.4%. That's a 4.5 difference. Okay? So Biden got a 4.5 bump up, and look at Sanders. <clears throat> the exit poll was 30.4%. The reported total was 26.7. That's minus 3.7%. So when you add 4.5 in one direction and 3.7 in the other direction, that's where you get your 8.2. Looks more like 8.3, 8.2, whatever. 8.1, 8.0, over 8% off. So that's where you get it. Now, did they just screw Sanders? No. They screwed Elizabeth Warren as well because the same bump up, right, now, if you, like I said, if, if Biden, it, look at the exit polling. The exit polling reveals it all. Biden, 28.9, and Sanders, 30.4. Bernie Sanders won Massachusetts, according to the exit polls. Again, just like 2016. And the reported vo- votes are different. And there's the evidence right there. 
There's the evidence, as reported from, you know, reported by CNN after the count. Now, why did they screw Warren as well? Warren's vote was 3.6, because they, maybe they still perceive her as the progressive uh, uh, of sorts. And why did they jack up Bloomberg? Look at, look at Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Bloomberg exit polls were 9.1. And they gave him 11.7. It's not big, uh, that big of a deal. Buddha Judge, all upwards. Buddha Judge, 1.3. They gave him 2.6. Right, just shaving points. But the biggest discrepancies are here, where they ripped Bernie off of 3.7%, 3 and they gave Biden 4.5%, a difference of 8.2. With, with uh, Warren, it's, it's a difference of 8 that right there is evidence of election fraud. So again, the first column is the exit poll downloaded from the CNN website. Let's go there. So here's the CNN website. There's all these statistics. I don't know what it all means. <laughs> I'm just going to rely on these guys. By, by T, TDMS on election night, March 3rd at 8 p.m., candidates exit poll percentage per Percentage derived from the gender category. Number of EP residents, respondents, 1,394. As this first published exit poll was subsequently adjusted towards conformity <laughs> with the final computerized vote, the current published exit poll differs from the results above. You know what that means? That means that the numbers, they get the exit poll, and then they get the computerized version, and then they combine the two. How fucking ridiculous is that? That means that CNN is complicit, and all of these agencies are complicit in voter fraud. It's done right out in the open. The current published exit poll differs from the results above, because they are adjusted towards conformity. What the hell? What kind of freaking math is that? That's so sick. In the second column, so so there there you have it. That's that's the evidence right there. They 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 jacked up Biden by four point five, and they slammed Sanders by three point seven. Now, is there any other stuff coming out here? Let's go back. Let's go, let's go to their front page. This is Massachusetts 2020. Here they got a South Carolina poll. Let's look at that one. That one looks a little bit a little bit more fair, I think. That's not letting me open the page. But here, no, here there's a discrepancy of 3.7 for Biden up and Sanders for a 1.4 down. Okay, so, so that's a that's a that's within the margin of error, but it's right on the border. Uh, so they didn't they they probably found another way to cheat in South Carolina. <laughs> uh, so what else? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Let's see. In New Hampshire, this is New Hampshire. Yeah. So New Hampshire. We have um, Sanders, of course, always down, negative. His, his numbers are a little off, down. And Biden, before he was the darling, I say this is probably more fair because the cheat, what this tells me is that it tells me that everything leading up, with the exception of Iowa, perhaps the last, the last three contests in New Hampshire, in Nevada, and in uh, South Carolina were probably closer to fair, and the big cheat came in on Tuesday. All of the evidence is in is in Super Tuesday. If you care to look, if you care to dig, I just gave you the evidence. I'll leave the link down below to the article and the research organization. You can do your own deep dive if you like. But that's the evidence right there. We were right. Now we need to look at Maine, where Bernie lost. We need to look at Minnesota, the Northeast. I, Texas, apparently there's discrepancies in Texas as well. That's, I'm told that that's going to come out too. This came from a tip. Thank you very much. If you have tips, kindly send it to my, uh, my uh, email address. It's right over here. It's in the split screen. It's down below. See Intel drop. If you have any drops, drop it, please. Thank you very much for the guy who sent this to me. 
And uh, there you go, man. You got your evidence, man. No bullshit. No, no escaping that one. Marcus Conte reporting.